And we are back. We're doing something I don't usually do, uh, but we are going to jump the line here. <laughs> I don't usually do that, but I am going to do it uh, for a reason this morning. We're going to say hello to the Honorable Minister of Natural Resources and the member for St. John Center, Sean Skinner. Good morning. And good morning to you, Randy. How are you doing? I'm doing fine, and uh, thank, thank you very much for allowing me the opportunity to come on. Well, you know, we went looking for you a little earlier this morning, obviously, after this Muskrat Falls thing came down, yeah. and we very, very much wanted to get you if we could, which is why... As soon as you got back to us, we're putting you on right away uh, and, and making a couple of others work. But uh, wait, but this is an important issue. I just listened to the leader of the New Democratic Party uh, uh, again say, time to put full stop on this project to some of the things the Environmental Review Committee have pointed out as a problem uh, have been addressed. First of all, how do you react to the report, and then how do you react to that recommendation? Well, in terms of my reaction to the report, uh, it's, it's another, I would say to you, it's another step forward in terms of the process that we started, you know, many years ago in terms of the development of the Lower Churchill Project. We understood, and any government uh, doing a project of this magnitude will understand that it's a multi-year project. And there are a number of stages of the project and a number of phases you have to go through, and the environmental assessment panel's work was one of those phases and so it's done its work it took a couple of years it's come back with some information for government to consider and we will obviously do that i'm i'm uh, you know all 83 recommendations will be studied and analyzed by us i'm currently reading my way through the report but for us we're we're interested in what the panel has to say and since they've concluded their work which was back in april month we've already initiated more work we've got two independent studies on the go which they've asked us to do so we're in sync with the panel on that now, these two independent studies, one of them being done by Navigant? Correct. And the other one is the Manitoba Hydro one, I'm assuming. Well, well no, I, actually, I'm referring to the Public Utilities Board myself. Okay, you're referring to the PUB. Yes. Which, well, actually, I think Manitoba Hydro has actually been uh, uh, contracted, contracted by, by PUB. Correct. So we're, we're, we're talking about the same thing. Yes, we are. All right, so those two reports are what you're waiting for to come back now. They, they will be a part of the information that government will use when it gets nearer to the point where we have to make a final sanctioning decision. Uh, you know, we've said it. I've heard the, uh, the Premier say it. We've not made the final decision yet on sanctioning. We are still going through the analysis process. And the purpose of the Environmental Assessment Panel review was so that there could be a set of what I would call cold eyes look at this. We've been doing all the work, we being government and Alcor, a set of cold eyes look at it and say, here are some things we think you need to revisit or some things you may not have considered that you need to consider before you make your final decision. So that's all been good work. So you don't view, that, you don't view this report as being uh, in any way detrimental to, I'll, I'll call it, if not government, Nalcor's plan to do Muskrat Falls. You don't see this report as being a stumbling block in there? This report was intended to provide us with the best possible information before we make final decision and make sure we've looked at everything that we need to look at. And so they've pointed out a number of things that we need to do. So I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable with that. I'm okay with that. And the reports that we get from Navigant and Manitoba Hydro and the Public Utilities Board, the same kind of process will be involved. I, look, I have, I've said it before and I'm going to say it again, I have every confidence in the analysis that Nalcor has done. And if cold eyes look at it and say they feel more analysis needs to be done or we need to look at other areas, we're happy to do that, and I'm sure Nalcor will be happy to do that. We want to make sure that when the final decision is made to either sanction or not sanction this project, it's made with the best possible information. And that's why the many stages that we've gone through along the way are important to us before we make that final decision. This do, is important information. Do we not make that decision harder, that decision not to go? not to do it, if it should come to that. Do we not make that decision harder, given how far down the road we've gone and uh, how quickly? And, you know, th there's been some huge, pretty huge gobs of money uh, invested and spent here. There comes a point at which, even if, you, even if there are people out there who feel it's not the right deal, you know, you, you end up start chasing an outcome, yeah. and that could cost you a fortune and, and have a bad outcome. Are we not on that kind of a of a timeline or path here where pretty soon we can't say no. We've got $340 million this year, $500 million over the last couple of years, and, you know? We, we, we absolutely not are on that uh, kind of a, a treadmill, Randy, where we're chasing an outcome here. What we are doing, you know, again, I need to say it's normal business practice to do a bunch of reviews of any major project. We've done it on other major projects that we've had, you know, related to the offshore, for instance. 
Um, and, and, and I would, I'd argue with you, and I don't mean to argue, but I'd argue with you that we've done things in a fairly quick timeline. We've been at this, uh, this government for eight years, and previous governments to us have been doing studies on the Lower Churchill Project. We've been doing this for, for decades, to be honest with you, and it's getting to the point now where we're getting close to the sanctioning decision. But it, it's not been made. So all of the information that has been done over the many years in the past and the current information, updating some of the other studies, looking at new technologies, looking at the environmental impacts, looking at the financial impacts, all of that has been done. Now CORE has done it. The federal government did it when they provided us with the federal loan guarantee. When we go to the markets to see how the markets respond, the independent markets will do their own analysis of this project to see whether or not it has benefits. But all of that information will be considered by government before the final decision is made, and that's the prudent way to do it. There is an impression certainly out there as it exists this morning, Minister, uh, in referencing now particularly uh, Premier Dunderdale, who has, whose, whose opening volley on this has been to question uh, the methodology uh, if you if if you will use by the review panel in doing its work. In other words, she's actually challenging uh, the work of the panel. She's questioning the weighting system or the t style matrix system used to provide value to comment and and expertise and so on. How d do you think that she maybe should not have done that in light of your approach, which is you know this is just additional information to go into the hopper. My, my read of the report is that the panel has certainly taken the information that NALCOR has provided to it. They've acknowledged that NALCOR has significant knowledge, by the way. The panel, I don't believe, has, has uh, done anything to discredit NALCOR. I think what has happened is the panel has put equal weight on opinions that have been expressed. Yeah, the panel didn't discredit NALCOR, but, but, but there's certainly an impression that the Premier seems to have left that she's made an attempt, a weak, feeble, or otherwise, to discredit the panel. No, I, I don't interpret it that way at all. I think the point the Premier was making and the point that I would make is that you've, you as a panel have acknowledged the significant knowledge that NALCOR has and that the panel itself and the, and the participants in the process generally do not have, nor would they be expected to have, yet it appears in the writing of the report they've applied equal weight to both sides of the argument. But NALCOR has put forward so much information and so much background and so much documentation for their views, whereas some of the other people who have not necessarily supported it, haven't provided that level of detail and documentation. It seems to be unweighted in that regard. Minister, just before we conclude, what's the next step? Now, I know you've got this report. You're waiting for two others. But there are other things obviously going on as it relates to this project. Uh, what's the next step here? There, there are many things happening, Randy, at, at one time here with this project. You're exactly right. The next step for me is to make sure I finish uh, a good review of the report, incorporate that into the analysis that we'll do as we move forward, take the two reports that are currently commissioned, take that information when they're done, and then we'll move forward and look at all of that information and come forward with a recommendation at some point as to whether we sanction or not sanction. But there's still a fair amount of work to be done here. I encourage people to keep asking the questions. We'll continue to provide as much information as we can and make sure that people have a comfort level with this, and government certainly will have a comfort level before a final sanctioning decision is made. How about, uh, how about coming on the program with me next week for an hour? Sure, I'd love to do it. I'm thinking maybe uh, Tuesday morning. Yeah, if I if you can fit me in, I'll do my best to fit myself. I'd love the opportunity. What I will do is, well, I want you to have time to read the report and let everybody digest everything that's going on. Okay. And maybe what we do is this: I'll have Megan call your Heather. Okay. And uh, and uh, apparently they know each other. Know I didn't know this, but they they are. Megan now knows everybody who works for all the ministers. <laughs> so she's going to call your Heather and see if we can't set something up. And you know how I like to do this: I'd like you to come in for an hour. Uh, at least uh, dedicate an hour to me. If you're enjoying it and it's going well and you want to stay, we let you stay. Absolutely. You on sir. for that? Uh, I'm, I'm on for that, and I'll bring the coffee. All right. Uh, you're on, and it's, uh, we'll do it Tuesday morning if we can. We'll announce it Monday, and uh, we'll do it, say, from 9 to 10 minimum Tuesday morning here on Open Line. Minister Sean Skinner to talk about this report and the Muskrat Falls development itself. All right, sir. You and I have a date. Sounds good. All the best. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Take Thank care. You. That's the Honorable Minister of Natural Resources for the Government of Newfoundland and Labrador, Sean Skinner. Megan, did you hear all that? You got all that? You're going to talk to Heather? You're going to talk, I, I call it his Heather. I shouldn't say that stuff, right? You're my Megan, and that's his Heather. It's terribly sexist. Uh, you're going to talk to Heather, and you and Heather will arrange. He's going to be here for 9 a.m. Tuesday morning, and he's bringing the coffee. Jordan, good news. He's bringing the coffee.